Hi, I'm Fed, and I'm learning to make things by watching tons of videos and pouring all that information through my eye holes and into my brain bucket. Today, I'll show you how I made this awesome hard drive sound dampening and cooling cabinet out of IKEA furniture, 3D printed parts, and USB fans. Hi, I'm Fed. Ouch. Looks like the TARDIS, right? Well, it's not. This is the first version of a hard drive cabinet that I made a couple years ago. I had a bunch of hard drives in my home office piled on the floor and they were really noisy and I wanted to keep dust off of them. So I went to Ikea and I bought this Lixhult cabinet, drilled a couple holes in it and called it a day. Well, I later discovered that my hard drives were overheating, which is not good, and they were shutting off. So I decided to try again. My new design was also based off of the IKEA Lixholt cabinet. And by the way, I love IKEA. It's a great place to go for materials that you can hack and turn into other things. For the new cabinet design, I plan to add active cooling in the form of USB powered fans. But I wanted to make sure that everything, the drives, the fans would fit inside of the cabinet. So I built stand-ins out of foam core for the drives and fans I was going to place inside. This way I could plan where I needed to make holes, how many drives I could fit in there, where the fans should go, you know, all that planning stuff. There was one other thing I wanted to change. The Lixhold has this shelf. It's a little bit higher than the middle and I wanted it exactly in the middle so I could spread the airflow between the top and the bottom. I thought of different ways of doing that and what I came up with was to create loops with this 1 16th steel cable and these clips and then hang the shelf from those loops. Once I was done planning, I headed out to one of the most magical places for a maker, Ikea. Why, I feel like it was just yesterday. Oh, f what is that? Ah, uh, cut it out, I'm gonna hurl. I said they didn't have any of the red Lixholz in stock, but they do. I'm gonna get one. Ah, uh, the famous lack side table. These side tables are great for building 3D printer enclosures. Once I was done unpacking my Lixholt, I set myself to laying out all the pieces. I knew that I wanted to have two fans in the front and four in the back. To mark where the holes for the fans should go, I used a center hole punch and a jig I made out of cardboard. I had barely used my center hole punch since I bought it, and it was really satisfying to use it. Here I'm just testing to make sure that the holes are in the right place and everything basically fits together. To find the center of each fan, I drew lines from the corner holes.
The center hole punch was so much fun to use and so useful, I decided that it must be deemed this video's MVT. Next, I needed to drill holes so that the fans could draw air in and out of the cabinet. What tool was I going to use? I'm glad you asked. Let's talk nibblers. And I don't mean the, the character from a nibbler is this, also known as a metal cutter or a cutter. It's powered by a drill on this end. And then on the other ends, there's this. And this is the cutter head. This notch moves up and down and it just nibbles away little pieces of metal. These are great for cutting into thin metal in a curve. The instructions for, for the nibbler say if you want to cut a round hole, what you're supposed to do is the following. Here's the path of the hole you want to make. What they say is drill a hole here in the center of the path, large enough to pass the head of the nibbler through and then use it to cut along the path. If this looks rough to you, um, it's because I'm doing a really shitty job. <laughs> See, that's really pretty shitty. Yeah, I really made a mess of the holes um, for the nibbler, but at least I did it on the back panel. The nibbler comes with a circle cutting guide, but it requires like three hands, so two people to use it effectively. So I created a little jig to help me do it. The jig I made was really helpful in cutting the holes and they came out better than I had hoped. They're all pretty good. Uh, this was where I tried making the first holes. You can see that it's pretty chewed up, but that's why I started on the back because we're not going to be able to see this at all. I followed the instructions from the nibbler for the back panel. But if you do that, you end up with a hole that looks like this. So there's a little bump in it, which I didn't want. So instead, I decided that what I could do is I could make a hole that was tangent on the inside of the area that I was going to cut out that was plenty large to allow the the head of the nibbler to go through and that worked for me. There's a little tiny bit of a, a little divot in there. What I ended up with was something like that. My experience cutting the fan holes on the back panel taught me so much of where to place the nibbler tool, how to use it, where to place the pilot holes, that by the time I got to the front panel, it went a lot more smoothly. So these are all the, the nibbles taken out by the tool. I'm wondering if I could do something with it. I don't know, maybe I should save these? Kind of looks like chain mail. Next up was drilling all the cable pass-through holes, which it turns out you can't just do any old way. So I turned to my drill press, set it to its lowest speed, and carefully drilled holes in different parts of the cabinet that would serve as cable pass-throughs.
These are the holes I drilled. This is the shelf. These holes are 35 millimeters. This is just so I can pass cables through if I need to from the lower level to the upper level of the, of the cabinet. This is the left panel and this, these are both 22 millimeter holes. This is for USB cables coming out of the drives. This is for a thermometer that I'm going to mount here on the side. And this cable, this uh, hole down here is 40 millimeters and it's for the power cables coming out of the different drives. So now that I have the holes drilled for where the wires go through, I can show you guys this um, cable pass-through grommet that I uh, designed. There's an outer ring that you snap into the hole and then you feed the large cables through. Once that's in, I can start putting each half of this gasket in. There you go. And now those cables can go in with this really nice grommet that blocks the hole. On the back side, you put in the other ring. This is the lock that holds everything together. There we go. Now it's locked in place. I can now finish the front door, the front panel of the cabinet by attaching the fans and these plastic filters that help keep some of the dust out of the cabinet. Don't tell my wife, but I think these look pretty hot. Let's get ready to final assembly. This is where I'm attaching a USB powered thermometer that's going to tell me the temperature inside of the cabinet. These are the metal loops that I built to hang the shelf lower than where it was so it could be in the center of the cabinet. I also spent way too much time designing these little plastic clips so that the cable wouldn't slide, but they ended up not working. And to make sure that the shelf wouldn't move, I ended up just having to use hot glue. I bought this anchor wall charger to power all the fans and the thermometer, but couldn't figure out exactly where I wanted to put it. Here I'm drilling holes so that I can mount a power strip on the outside of the cabinet. And I finished up by attaching the few remaining 3D printed cable clips. The final touch were these 3D printed replacement legs that I designed in Fusion 360. And here's the cabinet in all its glory in my home office. This is version 1.0 and it looks good, but I quickly discovered that it was noisy. There were a lot of vibrations and it was really dusty. As I'm making more things and I'm learning from those mistakes, I'm realizing that it's good to have plans. Planning's important, don't get me wrong, but you have to be flexible with those plans as they inevitably won't work out every time. So with that in mind, uh, let me show you how my final IKEA Lixholt cooling cabinet ended up. After experimenting with fan placement and fan speed and comparing external and internal temperatures of the cabinet, I decided that I only needed fans in the back of the cabinet. 
Having fans on the front of the cabinet didn't make the cabinet cooler. It just added to fan noise. It also allowed drive noise from the inside of the cabinet to come out through the fans. So I took out the front fans and I replaced them with these air baffles that I designed that allow air to go in, but also block sounds. To keep dust from slipping in on the sides of the front door, I hot glued some strips of felt on the inside of the cabinet. And finally, I wanted to reduce drive noise even more, so I got this acoustic panel material and hot glued it to the inside of the cabinet. It significantly reduced sounds. It also turns out that this is a really useful building material. It's really easy to cut and light, and I used it to raise and sound dampen my Synology NAS, and even to support this external power strip, which is in the back of the cabinet. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. There are affiliate links to the products and the materials that I use to make my, my cabinet in the description below. Uh, there are also links there for some videos that I use to inspire me, to teach me about uh, airflow, for example, through PC cabinets, stuff I would find useful for the construction and design of my cooling cabinet. See ya. Bye. Where are my Doctor Who fans at? I really think that they're, ugh, they're surface or and hey, blah, blah, blah. You'll get to see if I can actually get out of from under the floor.